Hello there you beautiful bugger you, I'm Chris from Techspert and a highly exciting unboxing today because we've got Oppo's fresh new flagship smartphone, the Find X5 Pro. And no, don't worry, you didn't get so mortally wasted that you passed out and missed the entire Find X4 series because we skipped straight to the X5 from the X3, just to make things extra confusing. But the Oppo Find X5 Pro is seriously premium smartphone tech through and through. It's powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, stunning next level AMOLED display, and you got that Marisilicon LED camera tech which looks to be a rival to any other smartphone camera out there. And that right there is just the tip of the Oppo Find X5 Pro as well. Tip of the iceberg, I should say, otherwise it sounds a bit dodgy. So enough banging on, let's whip the Oppo Find X5 Pro and out the box, take you on a full on tour of the hardware and the software, and for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So the actual box itself, very grey and not very exciting at all, but of course it's what's on the inside that really matters. So what have we got? Well, there's one Oppo Find X5 Pro. Be kind of disappointed if there wasn't. You've got a proper WAS power adapter bundled in there, and it is an 80 watt effort. A decidedly unthrilling but highly functional USB cable. You got a porky pin device for getting your SIM tray open and a USB adapter. There's a branded prophylactic case that you can wrap around your Oppo Find X5 Pro if you want to keep it pristine. Although I've got to say that does then cover up the rather stunning good looks of this device and makes it look a bit bland. And last up something that looks like some sort of business card. And it looks like some sort of VIP club premium service effort. I wonder if I can give them a ring, see if they'll deliver me a crate of beer. And that's it for the box. Pretty good stuff, considering a lot of premium smartphones these days literally give you a USB cable, and that's pretty much it. So now, something I've been looking forward to for a while, finally getting my mitts on the Oppo Find X5 Pro and checking out that gorgeous design that we've seen leaked in so many renders and such forth on the internet for quite some time. So while there's certainly no surprises left as far as the aesthetics go or anything, it doesn't detract from the really nice premium look and feel of this thing. Now this is a meaty 6.7 inch smartphone, so quite the handful like pretty much every other smartphone launching these days to be fair. Still pleasingly comfortable to clutch though thanks to the rounded corners and edges. As you can see there, the display just slopes ever so slightly around the edges on the left and the right sides. So pretty skinny bezels surrounding that display overall. And then if we flip the Oppo Find X5 Pro around, you've got that lovely, gorgeous ceramic back. Oppo's gone with the unibody design. So as you can see there, the back end actually slopes up towards the camera lenses. There's not a separate chassis. So it's all constructed from a single piece of ceramic. And I really do like the angular design of the camera there. It looks really, really nice. Oppo claims it's a futuristic design. I'm not really getting any sort of sci-fi vibes from it, I've got to say, but it does look very neat. Just helps the Oppo Find X5 Pro to stand out from its peers, uh, so it is immediately identifiable as an Oppo flagship. You can choose from two different colours. You've got ceramic white, otherwise this here, glaze black model, but it's also constructed from ceramic, slightly confusingly. Only two little issues with that back end, really. One is it does pick up greasy prints rather easily, although they're not super obvious here on the glaze black model at least, but you will want to give it a bit of a buffing up occasionally just to uh, to keep it clean. And also, I'm really not a fan of all this extra writing that you've got stretching across the entire length of the back end of the Find X5 Pro. Would have much preferred maybe just the Oppo Hasselblad logo and then get rid of all of this crud. I mean, it's kind of like taking a gorgeous celeb like Tom Holland or someone and then getting a biro and drawing a big cock and balls on his forehead. But anyway, with that ceramic back and the Oppo Find X5 Pro should be one of the hardiest smartphones around, should hopefully be scratch proof, shatter proof, the lot. And then and up front you've got a Gorilla Glass Victus display with a pre-installed screen protector and then factor in the IP68 water and dust resistance and I think that this Oppo blower gets a full 5 out of 5 Jason Stathams. Oh, and it's definitely also worth pointing out that you've got Oppo's Smart Antenna 3.0 design here on the Find X5 Pro as well. So that should mean a nice clear signal no matter how you are clutching this phone, both the Wi-Fi signal and the mobile networking signal. So let's shift our focus momentarily from the hardware to the software. And what we got here is the latest Android 12 OS with Color OS Launcher slapped on top version 12.1. Now, like a lot of launches these days, Color OS does offer a mostly stock Android style vibes. You've got the Google Discover feed as usual. You've got your apps trade, store away, all of your stuff so it's not slathered all over the desktops. You've got your notifications bar that you can drag down like so. So all very, very familiar. If you've used an Android smartphone before, you'll basically know what to expect. But then Color OS does chuck in a lot of bonus bits as well. So for instance, the personalization section is really good if you want to customize the look and feel of that OS. You can change up the icons, the wallpaper. You've got an always on display feature. This includes the likes of the portrait silhouette. With this, you just select any photo you've got lurking on your smartphone and then hit generate. And boom, you've got yourself a sort of an arty, silhouette-y thing. 
Otherwise, there's plenty of other digital and analog efforts that you can choose from and you can customize them with various colors. And speaking of colors, of course, because this is Android 12, you do have the wallpaper color picking option. So you can choose the UI colors based on the wallpaper you're currently sporting. You can basically change up absolutely everything from the fingerprint animation to the uh, edge lighting feature as well, which is basically a notifications light, except just using the curved edges of the display. And since I mentioned that in-display fingerprint sensor as well, before I forget, it is just an optical scanner, not an ultrasonic scanner, but so far touch had absolutely no issues with it whatsoever. So Super responsive as you can see there and no issues even if your hands are a little bit moist or anything still seems to work fine and that is also backed by an excellent bit of face recognition as well so just tap that power button and as you can see there immediately recognizes your mug and you do have the usual safety features on here such as for instance requiring the eyes to be open in order for that to work and lots of other bonus bits tucked away inside of Color OS 12, but I've actually done a dedicated video purely on Color OS 12 and the various features. So definitely go check that out for an in-depth look. And on the storage front, if I can actually find storage anywhere in this bloody menu. Ah. Now, of course, it's in about device because I always forget that. Good old Color OS, that's one of the little problems with this. Sometimes it tucks away some of the settings in a menu that you wouldn't expect to find it in. Uh, but what you've got here is 256 gigs of internal storage built in not expandable sadly via micro SD indeed if you check out the sim tray it is a double-sided tray so you've got space for two sim cards in there at the same time there is eSIM support on the Find X5 Pro as well but yeah no memory cards so now what about that whopping great 6.7 inch AMOLED display here on the Find X5 Pro it is a bit of a stunner as you'd kind of hope and expect at this sort of premium price point WQHD plus resolution so photos and videos just look so supremely crisp. However, as usual, you will have to remember to dive into the display settings and tap screen resolution if you want to take full advantage of that Quad HD plus effort because it's stuck at full HD plus by default. Otherwise, you can also hit auto select and let the Find X5 Pro choose between full HD plus and Quad HD plus depending on what you're actually doing. But again, as you'd expect from a top end flagship, you've got full HDR 10 plus support. You've got 10 bit color reproduction. So if you're watching supported content, you can expect just lush visuals through and through a nice sharp contrast. It's just a, it's a stunning premium panel as you would hope for. Oh, and on top brightness as well, the Find X5 Pro will basically incinerate your eyeballs and then burn a hole right through your skull and out the back of your head again. Powerfully fierce it is, and over 8,000 levels of brightness, so you can dim it right down at night time as well and get it nice and comfortable for your evening viewing. Lots of other display features you can play around with, including changing up the color mode. I like it on the default vivid settings, to be perfectly honest with you, because uh, certainly the likes of anime and animation really, really pops. You can choose for a natural output instead if you prefer, otherwise go to pro mode and you can play around with the various options there. You could also have the phone tweak the color temperature based on the ambient light as well, if you like. You've got the usual O1 Ultra Vision engine features too. This can allegedly sharpen up lower res content. We're talking like 480p, that sort of thing, but I can't really say that it makes much of a difference, certainly in my testing. And last up, screen refresh rate as well. It's set to high by default, as you can see there. It tops off at 120 hertz, but it does dynamically switch all the way down to just one hertz as well, if you're basically doing bugger all. Just checking out a photo or a static website, something like that. And according to Oppo, you can actually have a different screen refresh rate on both sides of the display if you're using a split screen mode as well. So for instance, watching a video on the top half, you'll have a nice fast refresh rate. And then on the bottom, just checking out your WhatsApp or whatever, that'll have a lower refresh. And you've also got a stereo speaker set up here on the Oppo Find X5 Pro, just like all premium blowers, basically. So let's bump up that volume, see what we got. Lord CE 2s of the world with its budget defined specs, including a super sharp AMOLED screen, Dimensity 920 Smart. And yeah, I'd be perfectly happy just kicking back with a bit of Netflix, YouTube, whatever, while working away in the kitchen on this thing because it's got a pretty good top volume right there, that's for sure. Everything comes through nice and clear as well, solid quality audio. Of course, as with all super expensive smartphones, there is bugger all headphone jack action here, so you're set on basically using a dongle or get your bit of Bluetooth 5.2 on the go. So now let's have a shifty at the performance. What you got running the show here on the Oppo Find X5 Pro is the latest, freshest Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset, one of the most powerful SOCs out there. That is backed here on this Oppo Blow by 12 gigs of RAM. Not quite as impressive benchmarking scores as I got from the same chipset on the Vivo iQ 
9 Pro, whatever it was called, uh, but still very, very solid indeed. Beats the likes of Samsung's Galaxy S22 series with its Exynos chipset. You can, of course, expect smooth everyday performance from this thing, no judders or shakes or stumbles whatsoever. And as for your gaming, well, this thing was definitely built to handle even the beefiest titles like Genshin Impact, so let's go whack a goblin. So I spent a good chunk of this morning having a bit of a casual session on Genshin Impact, working my way through various missions, and I gotta say, stunning performance on this thing. I did naturally boost the graphics quality all the way up to the highest possible setting, and then the frame rate up to 60 FPS as well to really put this thing through its paces. And that whopping huge Oppo display, those poppy colors and the visuals in general just looked absolutely stunning, really leapt off the screen. And even in the heat of battle, the frame rate stayed pretty stable. There were a couple of little dips here and there when things got really intensive, but considering this was running on the maximum settings, that's not really surprising. Color OS has a dedicated gaming mode, which allows you to tweak the screen sensitivity to suit your liking. You can boost the performance when needed. And you can also throw on the leave me the f alone mode, which just blocks notifications and keeps you focused on what you're actually doing. I was a little bit worried that the Find X5 Pro might start to heat up a bit after a good sort of, you know, 30, 40 minutes of gaming on this thing, but thankfully it was all good. Oppo has chucked in a vastly expanded vapor chamber compared with the previous flagship, uh, and that covers the Snapdragon SoC as well as the battery. You've also got some graphene film surrounding the motherboard and the charging coil, all kinds of different coolant solutions on here. And yet the back end of the Find X5 Pro did get a little bit toasty, but nothing troublesome whatsoever. And I certainly didn't notice any drop in performance, even at the end of a good sort of like three quarters of an hour of, of bashing goblins and whacking slimes and all that good stuff. So if you are a gamer, you're looking for a smartphone that can handle the latest, freshest mobile games, but you don't want a dedicated gaming smartphone, you just want a proper premium smartphone through and through, well, highly recommend this bad boy. And of course, because you've got that Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, you've got full 5G support, you've got Wi-Fi 6 support, all of that good stuff. As for the battery life, well, so far, no complaints out of the Find X5 Pro. I've been using it as my full-time smartphone for a couple of days now at this point of the unboxing, and it's been absolutely smashing it. You've got a 5,000 milliamp cell stuffed inside of that gigantic frame. And for instance, as of right now, it's just gone at 10 a.m. I've had the screen on for two and a half hours precisely. Most of that time has been either playing Genshin Impact or streaming a good bit of YouTube or just demonstrating the phone to you fine folk. And it's currently sat on 76% battery life still. So stay tuned for my final review of this phone to see what I really think of the battery life, but so far, very impressive indeed. And then on top of that, you've got your 80 watt Super VOOC charging support on this thing as well. So slap in the cable, use the bundled adapter, and it'll power up again in under half an hour easily. You've got your Air VOOC charging support as well, 50 watt there. So if you've got a supported wireless charging pad, then again, won't take long to power this thing back up. And now let's finish up this Oppo Find X5 Pro unboxing with a squint at the camera tech, which is spearheaded by a 50 megapixel primary sensor. You've also got a secondary 50 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter and a 13 megapixel telephoto lens. The primary shooter uses a glass lens to reduce light halo effects and other bullshittery. And Oppo has also designed the camera with five axis optical image stabilization. And that's actually a three axis sensor shift combined with a two axis lens shift. And if you're up for even more geeky optics chat, well, the camera here is powered by Oppo's own Marasilicon Imaging NPU, or Mazza to its mates. This is a dedicated image processor which sits separate to the Snapdragon SoC. And just like OnePlus, Oppo has now partnered with Hasselblad as well, the optics experts, and they've had a clear impact on the camera UI in a few little ways, such as, for instance, the more obvious one is the bright orange shutter button, and some more visual flair if you dive on into the camera settings. Well, Hasselblad also helped Oppo to develop the Pro mode as well, so you've got the full uh, range of different features you'd expect. You can shoot in RAW or RAW Plus. You can tinker with all of the various settings. But if you want to just stick with a straight up auto mode, well, that's definitely absolutely fine because the Oppo Find X5 Pro will still spaff out some absolutely stunning photos. Stay tuned for my full in-depth review of this phone for a much closer look at the camera results, but check out some of these test samples I've already shot. Really nice, natural looking pictures. Living subjects in particular come out really well, even really flappy, hyperactive ones off their tits on Haribo. These colors are impressively lifelike, just like what you would see with the naked eye. Portrait shots come out really nice, as usual with Oppo flagship phones. And when you swap to that 50 megapixel ultra-wide angle shooter, you don't see any degradation 
in the lifelike colors either. Those tones still appear perfectly natural. In addition to the 50 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter, you've also got a 13 megapixel telephoto snapper, which offers a two times optical zoom. You can punch in above this if you want to get even closer to your subject, although I wouldn't suggest going any greater than the sort of 10 times level. Once you hit that, things start to look a bit grainy and at the maximum 20 times zoom level, yeah, things ain't particularly great. So the zoom is definitely quite limited compared with some rivals like of course Samsung's Galaxy S22 Ultra with its ridiculous 100 times space zoom, but it is still absolutely fine for just getting a bit closer to, you know, your pets, your kids without disrupting the scene. And apparently the Finex 5 Pro is absolutely stunning for your low light shots, helped along massively by that image stabilization. So I'll be taking lots of low light shots over at MWC to really test this thing out. But again, here's just a few quick examples. And apps are bloody lootly tons of bonus modes that you can get on the go as well, including a high res mode, which uses the maximum capabilities of that 50 megapixel shooter. One of those new bonus modes is the X-Pan mode, courtesy of Hasselblad. This shoots in a vintage style 65 by 24 aspect ratio. And apparently when you capture a snap, it captures a negative image and then adds color to it. Not really sure what that adds to the overall photo quality, but hey ho. Otherwise, if you want, you can just shoot a black and white image as well. And this probably be quite nice for some of those sort of scenic shots. And then if we swap to the video mode, you can shoot up to 4K resolution footage at either 30 or 60 frames per second. And again, here's just a brief teaser of what the Oppo Find X5 Pro is capable of, but certainly seems like a good one for your home movies. Again, those nice natural looking colors, plenty of crisp detail chucked in there as well. Seems to not struggle at all with HDR style situations. And even in low light, not bad returns. And then finally up front, you've got a 32 megapixel selfie shooter, which again seems to do the job absolutely perfectly for your everyday shareable snaps. Again, with that full on portrait mode action. And using that selfie cam, you can shoot up to full HD resolution of video, no 4K option sadly, but you can change the angle if you like, so you can boost it ever so slightly out, fill a little bit more into frame. But anywho, that in a nutshell, my lovelies, is the Oppo Find X5 Pro. Only been using it for a couple of days as my full-time smartphone, but already very much in love with this thing. Gotta say, it's a premium experience through and through. The performance, the battery life, the media chops, and that camera tech, just so good. But of course, it ain't gonna be cheap, that's for damn sure. I don't know the official UK pricing just yet, unfortunately, because I'm shooting this ahead of the official launch on Thursday. Uh, but as soon as I know that, I'll slap it down in the comments below. But I'd get seven now, let's just put it that way. So anyway, what do you guys reckon of the Oppo Find X5 Pro so far? Be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. And stay tuned next week for my in-depth review of this thing, including a very full, very extensive camera test. And don't forget to poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell to be the first to see that bad boy go live and have yourselves a wonderful rest of the week. Cheers everyone, love you.